Okay, good to go. First of all, um, special congratulations. Um, uh, hey, Steve. Special congratulations to Tina, uh, one of our members in the room. 868 ticks this week since Monday. So congratulations, Tina, um, on 868 uh, ticks since Monday using the system. Way to go. Love seeing success. Love seeing success. So good job. All right, let's get uh, let's get rolling here. L let's get rolling on uh, on the setup. So we we talked about last week. We talked about the W uh, the WPT. So we talked about the WPT. We talked about how that that's catching the wrongly positioned traders because what we have is we have the speed bars in here, and what the speed bars are and um, are based upon basically we're looking for exhaustion for turning points, exhaustion, volume spikes at turning points. So what we can do then is we can use these uh, uh, critical turning points to place small stops for high potential rewards. So what we're going to do is we are looking at, this is a close, this is since what, 2.30 all the way into the close. Uh, it finally got stopped out on the, um, on a, uh, this is a 38 ATR. I use a 33 and a 38 ATR on my WPT trades off of the 5 Simrenko. So this is a 5 Simrenko. 5 Simrenko. Um, yesterday, um, I was talking with someone in the room. I forget who it was. But this is my, my longer one, I like to use 38 to contain a WPT. And my shorter one, I, I, like, to use, um, I like to use the 33 and the 5 Sim. I don't like to go any shorter than a 33 ATR when these WP, WPTs come up. Um, you know, as Tina did very well today, over 800 plus ticks uh, this week uh, with the five minute, I mean five sim and so on. It, it just, it's a really good ATR to work off of. Uh, 33 is one of my best levels. If you want to contain price on pretty much a whole trend, um, I wouldn't go higher than 38, 36 to 38, but I like using 38. So. We'll go down through here. I want to take a look at this oscillator down here today, how we use this, and how you catch these WPTs. And so when um, a WPT, why did I name it, and how did, I, how did we design this? Uh, basically, what it, all we're trying to do is um, I was a big fan of Market Profile. Uh, Peter Stoudemire came out with Market Profile in 1985, and then uh, Price Profile, and they came out with Volume Profile in 1994. So Ever since then, when I've been trading the markets, uh, profile was one of my biggest things I've always followed. He's one of my biggest fans. Um, so him, Tom DeMarc, and also Larry Williams, three of the top traders that I've really followed and I, I, I really love. So what I what, what I, uh, I loved about Pete is that, uh, Peter, is that, you know, market profile has stood the test of time. It's based upon order flow. Well, that's why I designed these speed bars, these green bar boxes and these red boxes. Because these are basically volume spikes in the market that let you know of possible turning points. What I could not uh, figure out with um, with Pete's the volume spike system that he has, there's so many I really couldn't figure out a, a system how to trade them. So I came up with my own proprietary system. I made this in my own uh, these boxes. You won't find anywhere in the world. They're not uh, they're not off of anybody. It's my own original creation. Um, so nobody sells these, and no one has these out there. So, so what I did is, is I made it into a visual, uh, a visual interpretation of the market on any market. I don't care if it's futures, stocks, forex, currency. It doesn't matter. And what happens is when you see a red box, that's obviously they're hitting the bid. When you see a green box, that's major buyers hitting the ask. So when you see a series of green boxes, that means you get a series of people just hitting the ask. It's almost like when I was, I was a small order execution trader back in 1990, was it 96, 97, 98, uh, that period where we were SOS traders. You probably saw us on magazines and all that stuff, how we were, you, you know, uh, have big volume in the market, buying big blocks of individual stocks and trading them. It was based upon the same concept. It's based upon all volume. And we did this, uh, I, we do the same thing with futures. Is it futures or stocks or currency? or whatever you trade, um, typically a high and low is going to be based off of uh, a volume spike. You'll see a volume spike in the market. Uh, back then, we used time of sales a lot. 
So if we see a big rush in time of sales as day traders, we would get in there with big blocks, you know, buy 15,000 shares of Microsoft or whatever, and we try to trade, you know, for, for you know, quarter, I mean, uh, 16th, 8th, 3 hands is crazy back then. But things changed. The SEC came in, I mean, um, and they came in and made everything a 16th with stocks. It used to be about a quarter spread. We used to trade stocks back in the 90s. In the 80s, they were about a half to three-quarter spread between the bid and the ask. And so with futures now, it's pretty neat because now you can uh, everything is a tick. So you know you can you can you can use an algo or algorithm to really find out when these volume spikes are coming in, or when they're hitting the bid really hard, or when they're really hitting the ask really hard. And that information, this is basically a time of sales indicator. Uh, but it, it what it does, it narrows it down for you, so you don't have to tape read. Tape reading is very difficult. I did it for years. Um, you, you try to find big blocks when Inky would come in and come out of the market. So we use level two. It's just very hard if you, you got to be really, really fast on your feet. Well, that's how these speed uh, boxes was uh, basically made up because th they're basically time of sales showing uh, uh, possible turning points on, on volume spikes. So when you see a big red, just remember, they're selling in the market. And you see a big, you see green boxes. There's buying in the market. So, how does that translate into a winning possible uh, setup on a on a day to day basis, week to week basis, month to month, year to year, and so on? Well, what we uh, I've come up with is I designed the speed boxes first, but the one thing I was missing is containing price within volatility the volatility range. So that's what I came up with this ATR, uh, this average true range that trails, it's almost like my symmetry dots, it's really pretty much easy to program because it's pretty close to my sim dots that I created a while back, about 10 years ago. Um, so then this ATR recently that I put in, it's much easier to see than just reading lower highs or higher lows on symmetry dots. So then I put it all together and said, listen, if I, 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 can, I can put an ATR and if it's red, we're in a downtrend. And if I have a green ATR, it's in an uptrend. So if I'm printing green here, if I'm printing green here on a green ATR, I want to have a I want to buy WPTs, and if I have a red ATR, I want to sell or short WPTs. So we're trying to catch the rolling position traders at a major volume surge to create a possible turning point at a swing high or swing low. So the settings I, I have for the five sim and the three sim I use. I'll give all you uh, traders in here this. The, I'll tell you right now, the 5 sim is very simple, is a 33, 33 ATR with a speed or volume spike or speed of 10. So if you put that in, you guys can pretty much emulate what I'm looking at right here. Um, and then you can also use as high as a 38 to contain major price on any given volume spike or what I call speed bars. I call them speed bars because that's what they are. It shows speed in the market. And that's just when they're hitting, hitting the ask a lot for green boxes or they're just nailing the bid for red boxes, okay? So that's the whole, that's why these things work so well. You know, you, that's why they're so consistent on a day-to-day, week-to-week -week basis. Now, so the trading plan is this. Now, here's a five sim. I'll show you a three sim. The trading plan, just like the algo pick up, picks up also, is very simple. Is what we want to do is when you see these yellow dots that form, what this shows is it shows that the market is not trending yet. You're pretty much flat, okay? When you start seeing the first red dot, it tells you one thing, that we're possibly into a move down in the market. So when you see a red ATR print, you want to look for a opposite color speed bar. So an opposite color speed bar is what we want to see. We don't see green boxes form. What does that tell me? It tells me that the market is now in a downtrend with my ATR, but I want to look for retracements on uh, uh, in on price, whatever markets I trade. But I don't want to look for red boxes. I want to look for green boxes because this shows me when they're hitting the offer or they're hitting the ask. Why? Because when you hit the ask, that are what? Those are counter trend traders. Now, if you, um, I would, everybody, I think, pretty much with any experience in the market as counter trend trade the market. I did a lot in the early 90s. I tried to trade tops and bottoms with major divergence and it just was a nightmare. Uh, anybody that trades counter trend trade, I've never, uh, that of the hundreds of traders that I've known over the years and years of not 
thousand, thousands of traders, um, even all, all these trade shows. Uh, the last trade show I was a guest at in Las Vegas, what was it, 2018 Jiro, I was a guest speaker in Las Vegas, and I, I literally asked, who's made money in counter-trend trading? And I had a huge audience. There's over 6,000 traders that attended the event, and not, I literally, there's really none of them raised their hands. So that just shows you that counter-trend trading is not the way to do it. So the more I thought about it, I was like, listen, well, if we can get a volume spike and get the counter-trend traders show when the counter-trend traders are pushing with volume. So if I can find when the, the traders are pushing with volume here, hitting the ask, hitting the ask really hard, then that's going to cause a major exhaustion point. And this is something that Pete went over when I, uh, I went to Las Vegas uh, twice to uh, see Pete, um, and uh, not Pete, but um, uh, Larry, Larry Williams and Tom DeMarc. And that's the one thing I really got from them is these exhaustion points. I mean, those, I, I just love the, the, some of their techniques that they use in the market. And, and that's the one thing I learned from them is that the market likes to exhaust itself. And, and Pete said the same thing uh, on exhaustion, on, on volume spikes. So you typically have a turning point at these exhaustion points. And that's, I, I really like those, those points from those three great traders, from the top traders I think in the world, is that that's what I learned from it. So what I did is I basically just programmed it into a program and said, hey, let's program this into an indicator. And then after the indicator, let, let's try to automate this thing into a strategy and see if we can get the strategy to emulate our manual trading. So once, uh, how you trade it is, is once you see the ATR start printing red, you look for the first green box. When those green boxes start printing, that tells you you got counter trend traders entering the market against the overall trend, ATR trend. That's what we want. And once you see that, you can look for this oscillator down below. Now, we have a long-term member, David, which uh, I'll give David all the credit on this, is that um, we always use an oscillator down here, uh, this oscillator with an eight period. But David said, hey, listen, well, let's try to avoid some of these, uh, uh, the, the down draw and let's try to avoid some of the, um, the confusion of when there's a pull-in bar up here on a setup, right, a setup bar and a trigger bar. But basically what we're saying is, is that you can literally, this, how I like to look at the market is when you have a top in the ATR, that is your setup bar, and then right when you close below it, right there's your trigger. And what Dave recognizes, Dave recognizes, and we appreciate your help on this to really help traders in the room out, is that once you see that, uh, that, that trigger bar close below for, to pull us in the market, for a short is that the next bar is typically a cross right here is typically a cross right on our oscillator which is a 20 so this is an oscillator down here it is a 20 uh, 20 DS this is a 8 DS that we use so the 8 DS is um, is a shorter DS and I, I got it red red and then magenta magenta so in other words I have 80 20 as my 20 80 on my 20 oscillator on the DS, and then I have an 8 with a 90-10. I love using the 90-10 on my arrows, and I'll show you why, on trends, and, but, and, I, and this works well for confirmation on a trend, especially on the 3 sim, and I'll show you that also. But, so we use the oscillator down here to confirm our volume spike, or what are called speed bars, our kind of trend traders that are coming into the market. Okay, and that's what we want to do. We want to try to um, we want to try to get into these exhaustion points with the minimum amount of risk we can, with the highest amount of reward. And you know, just like Tina doing over 800 plus ticks, you know, she's had some big runners. It's all about the runners. It's not about scalping for you know two ticks, three ticks, four ticks. These are high reward to risk ratios that we're dealing with. Uh, a setup, I'm sorry. So if you look at this, when you got the volume spike coming in on this 5, five sem, if you look down here, we get a cross below. If you look right here at the 8 DS, it crosses below right there above your 20, I mean above the 90, and then it crosses below the 20 right into resistance. Now, what some traders are using hotkeys for the 5 sem, and I showed you how to do that in the last video, where you wait till you get a, it actually 
comes up to this level, is getting close to that level, and you can go three ticks or four ticks above the ask or below, I mean, above the bid and below the ask. Um, so, um, so if you're trying to buy, you're trying to buy the retracement, you're trying to sell, you're trying to wait for that hockey to come, I mean, that uh, limit order to come back in, and then chart trader will take over. You can do that, or you can just buy the bid or sell, I mean, sell the bid or buy the ask. It's up to you. But you can, if you are going to use hotkeys, uh, the one thing about it is 5 sim is the best chart to use. 3 sim, I'm sure if, uh, we have some traders in here that use that, you're going to miss opportunities because limit orders will, on a 3 sim, they'll leave you behind. They'll straight leave you behind. All right, so um, these setups are so powerful by themselves is that um, a lot of traders just buy the ask or sell the bid. Um, but if you look at the next one when we come in, so we have an, we have the first volume spike here at around uh, what 250. Next volume spike into symmetry dots. It comes within one tick of my level. Let's just take a look at the oscillator. The oscillator rolls over. The eight goes right below it, right at that pull-in bar at that level. But look when we cross the 20 right here also, and then you get the big giant push down. And guys, these are not small moves. I mean, the the high on the S&P there is 45, 45, 75. You know, the next one down here is all the way down to 20 already. So these are huge possible S&P point moves. So then we move our way down. And this is what I'm going to talk about, about the arrows. First of all, if you get a re when the triangles come up on your indicator that you guys have, and this works on all markets, you can put this on all markets. When these triangles come up, I like to use, to see, use a saucer down here. You can use either one. You can use the 8 to get you in or the 20 to get you in. But I like using the 8 on the retracements and hard trends. That's my favorite. Now, it depends if you want to get a little bit later fill for confirmation using the 20. I love retracements using this 8 oscillator coming up through 90, coming back down through 90, coming down through 10, up through 10, only after my triangles print. So when these triangles print, and I'm adding this to our strategy, by the way, to, to, um, to add to the accuracy of I'm adding these oscillators down here as an entry point and also these limit backfill orders. And I'm doing that for you guys uh, uh, currently. So on the next update with all our strategy and stuff like that, um, I will be adding this oscillator down here to it. But the bottom line, when you manually trade this right here, if you see these triangles print, these are Fibonacci triangles. This has nothing to do with order flow, and I want to make sure this is clear. These triangles are simply Fibonacci retracements. That's all they are. They're simply Fibonacci retracements. Okay? Um, Terrence, uh, since the ATR spread is adjustable, how do we tell a retracement versus reversal? Uh, the retracements, you can use the oscillator to tell you down here, the oscillators. On the WPTs, I want to be on the outer edge of my ATR. So if I use a 3 sim, I want to be on a 25 ATR. If I use a 5 sim, I want to be on a 38 or 33, period. If I use a retracement, a retracement, I want to be butting up against the sim dots or up against the ATR. I don't want to be in the middle of no man's land. I want to butt right up against sim dots. I want to butt right up against ATR. Very simple. Keep it simple. Don't make it any more difficult than that. All right? So when you come here, see, if you look when these uh, triangles start printing, this is strictly retracement trading. So if you look below when the oscillator crosses, there's your entry. Nice big move. On, this is not a small move either. If you look on the 5 sim, 27 and a half, all the way down to 20 and a half. That's a five point, I mean, seven point S&P point move just on that retracement. So then we come up again and we have the WPT. WPT again. If you look at it, the WPT comes in. Look at your oscillator giving you confirmation to roll into the trade. I, if you use the 20, you're going to get less stopouts, but you're going to give up more ticks in, in between the high and your entry. But it avoids, like David came up with, it avoids a lot of times your M top or W bottom drawdowns. All right? It avoids the WPTs that typically don't work out if it just pushes straight through it. My rule of thumb, if you close two closes outside of my ATR, so let's say this starts printing green uh, WPTs, right? And you get you kept trying to catch the rolling position traders right here. Here's they're hitting they're hitting the offer right here. All right, they're hitting the offer. You want to fade this offer. You want to short it with trend. Well, if it blows two candles above this ATR 38, 
the, you know, you got to tell yourself, you know, just back off, wait for the next WPT. If not, you better have a smaller stop because that happens a lot, okay, where it closes two candles, close uh, away from it, just forget about it. And that's why this 20 will help you out because typically, and that's why I like how David came up with it, if it, if it comes up this ATR and if it wants to blow through the ATR and not reverse like this, this 20 typically does not go right back below the 80. It will just, it will, it will go stay above this 90%, right? Stay above 90% and never come back down. So, um, and it be, and then I'll close two candles, close outside of it. Then we come to the next WPT, same setup, same thing. Look at them hitting the offer. They're hitting, they're hitting buy, 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 buy. All these counter trend traders. We're looking to short. We're trying to fade it. And I love this setup. I cannot tell you how much I love this setup. In fact, I'm going to use this as a confluence setup in our strategy. When you click both toggle switches on the algo, is it if the if you get a triangle retracement with speed bars, you have a possible major possible reversal. And this happens a lot on the five and three sim. If you get right here again, up here it happened also right here. See this? That called that major high of 44 and a half. And that sucker went all the way down. I mean, it just got cranked. But you can see we have the triangles that came in right at the ATR with exhaustion. Right here with speed bars. Same here. Same here. Look at these inflection points. I, I get tickled pink when I see this. When I see that little triangle print at the high bar, and I see speed bars running into the ATR, I have a very high probability of uh, um, a setup right there when they are combined. Now, you don't have to have the WPT. You can have a retracement. Here's your retracement trade. It's got to stop a symmetry or the ATR, though. I don't want it down here just above this bottom ATR. I want to be hugging this AT, uh, sim dot, or I want to be hugging my ATR. Once again, look at your oscillator. Cross below 20 to, to power you in the trade. and Right there you go, and the market just, look at that, sell bid, sell bid, sell bid, sell bid, sell bid. Just beautiful trading. So then we come to the next WPT. Next WPT again. This is what David was talking about. Look how the 20 on this eight, on this WPT, it's good to learn from this. Let's look at these two WPTs. Look how it comes down to it. It rides right on it, rides back up, and then it finally closes back below it, and you get sell bid, sell bid, sell bid. You get these big sellers coming into the market. So and then we come to the next WPT, and like I said, I love when this happens. Here's another good example how you can avoid stopouts using this technique with the oscillator. Beautiful textbook technique. If we look at this WPT, we have buyers coming in the market. We got counter trend traders now hitting the market. We're smarter than the average bear. We know that if we get green against trend, that's counter trend traders. Shame on them trying to guess the bottom. We don't try to catch bottoms, right? We don't try to catch tops. We catch continuation patterns. So what we want to do, once it turns green, do we have the magenta oscillator going below 80? No. Look at that rejection. I call this rejection. Rejection means it's going to take out that high. That's the high. It takes out the high. But look what we got right at the high. We got our, our triangle, Fibonacci triangle, exactly exactly right on our ATR and the SIM dots. That's three times stacked area. You got to be just smiling ear for ear on this because you know you got a potential big runner on the S&P. And then what we got, we got a big move from 93 all the way down to uh, it's almost what, 68 and some change. So these are big moves. They just hit the bid. It's all over. They just stuck a fork in it. And then we come into the close. We come up, stops right to the tick on my ATR. Here's your WPT. Here is your pull-in bar, and then we get another good trade. Then we come up again, come up again into the close. But look at this. It closes one candle close above the ATR. That's not good enough. It's got to close two, two, two bars above the ATR. All right? That's two bars. Two bars above the ATR, only one, closes back below it. Look at that beautiful triangle so you have now a stacked area confluence then you get below it this is a five sim Renko, which is not a small move at all then you are 76 all the way down to 67 that was a nine s p point run so then we come up again 
we come up again to another WPT. Once again, oscillator, WPT. We catch a rolling position traders. All the counter trend traders are hitting the ask. Hit it, hit it, hit it. We have a beautiful uh, triangle right at the Fibonacci triangle on the retracement. We have our oscillator telling us to pop in the trade right there below 80% on the magenta. Or you can be a, more aggressive right here on a below the 90% right at the swing high. And then we get cranking again. Then we come down here to almost got to the symmetry dots. I would not take any retracements that's no closer than this, though. I want to be a couple ticks within symmetry. This is okay. I'm a couple ticks within symmetry. That's fine. I just don't want to be down here somewhere and trying to sell and buy retracements. All right, those triangles pop up. My oscillator pops us in, and we got some sell bids, and there we go again. Then we come up again into the close of the, I mean, coming into, it's after the close now. It's, what, 4.30. But here's the same thing, WPT, triangle, oscillator pops you in right here. Look at this. Oscillator pops you in, for, for goodness sakes, right there on that level. We're talking 52 and a quarter on the S&P all the way down to 37. You know, there's a lot of traders out there that just trade for a tick to risk or two ticks or three ticks or four ticks and risk 12 ticks. It's crazy. There's one trader had a, a, a ninja webinar and said, hey, just make a tick a day. I mean, come on, man is that these are big moves with high reward to risk moves. You just got to have correct stop placements and you're good. So it finally got stopped out there. Here's another one that lined up and then you made your profit and then another WPT. So if I look at the WPTs, just as 2.30 on the five minute, none of them got stopped out. You're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 in a row there, just since uh, 2.30 coming into the close based upon knowing using the oscillator as your guide and then the WPT catching the rolling position traders as an entry and using retracements. Now you can use, that's a 5 sim Renko, okay? The 3 sim, if we look at the 3 sim and we pop the 3 sim, uh, the ATR is a 33 is your normal ATR on hard trend days you can use a 38 those are the two I use, a 33 and 38. Yep, Thomas. And then on the um, on the three sim, I just use a straight 25. Uh, the, my sim dot settings are 25. All right, so if you look at the buy, this is a three sim. The buys are the same way, guys. We had a big surge this morning. I know a lot of you traders got on this when we were in the room. We're talking about it. There it is. Same thing. If you use a smaller time frame, it's a, it doesn't matter what time frame you use. They're all universal, okay? They're all universal. And Gerald gave me five minutes here, buddy, and we'll shut this off. But here we go again. We start green. This is green now. Um, I didn't get a chance to go over market profile for targets, but all the way back here at 745, I set our target up there. HBA was 76 and a half. I showed traders in the room how to draw that line on for targets, and I'll show you what happened. But... We had a, we hit it perfectly, and then she crumbled. But there's your WPT. Now the market's in an uptrend. We're green. So now what do we want? Do we want to look at the green speed bars or volume spikes, or we want to look at the red? No, now we want to look at the opposite color, red. Now we want to look at red. Red tells us we're trying to buy the retracement. We're trying to buy the, 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 the volume spike into the low and trying to get the move up. Look at your oscillator that helps you out. So let me blow these up so you can see better, so you understand the setup. But look at my favorites of Doge. I love when a Doge is formed. A Doge is an indecision between the buyers and sellers. And look at the 20 crossing through. Gave you just a beautiful buy. If you want to be more aggressive, you got your 20 that got rejected at the Doge. If you want to buy right on the ATR, that one got that one moving really well. The next one, same thing. You come down to it. And look at it coming down. Look at the oscillator. Oscillator gets above right there. Screams above your 20. That's your pull-in bar. Or if you want to wait a little bit later to be a little bit more conservative, let the 20 come through the 20. I mean, the, the 20 DS come through the 20. And then you're rolling right here, which is a huge move still. That's 50 and uh, 60 and 3 quarter potential all the way up to 70. So you're talking about almost a 10 S&P point move just off of that also. So the shorts on the three sim are the same way. The retracements are the same way. So here's a nice retracement. Listen, if you're going to get these retracement arrows, 
I like them when they, I mean, I not like them, I love them when they come up as confluence. Here's a, on the three sim, just like I showed you on the five sim. I mean, there's your three sim five days back. But look at that. Look how beautiful that is. You get your triangles right down with your oscillators crossing into a WPT, catching all the counter trend traders. Same thing here. There's your triangles near the ATR. Look at your oscillators crossing. Nails that big giant move. All right, so use it. You can use these oscillators for the retracements and also the WPTs. So as we get rolling, that was my target for for this uh, for the morning session uh, up there at that level, and we had a nice little uh, reaction off of it. I show you how to draw those market profile levels in on your own chart, and we'll uh, we'll go over that again tomorrow, um, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. Uh, Wednesday I did it and had some major inflection points like that. Also, um, we had some major uh, moves off those levels again today so that's something we'll look at but if you look at another if you look when it bought uh, when you break through let me find another one here's the WPT when you break through uh, same thing here's your WPT green oscillator I mean green ATR saying we're going up look at your oscillators coming through if you want to be a little bit more conservative let the 20 come through the 20 there it is if you want to be a little bit more aggressive you can buy right on the doji with a small stop below it and then it got that big spike. Uh, the afternoon was the same way. You can see how these my levels HVA stopped it again. Um, I'll go over my levels tomorrow again. Uh, that was just a big reaction off that little sucker here. My break retest inside the HVA. Use the oscillator to help you on your break retest trades. So not only can you use that oscillator on my WPT trades, use it on my break retest trades. You can see how uh, accurate my profile is. Uh, but if you look at that close below, that's why I like retracements with the eight oscillator. There's your close below with the doji right at the high. This is a beautiful break retest short. I've been doing this ever since Jero and I opened the room um, a long time ago with traders inside and outside the room. We look for a break, we look for a retest, use an oscillator to pop in. I'm going to share that, draw those market profile levels on your chart. And that's just with the triangles. I mean, just beautiful sell short, oscillator confirmed the short. Again, Here's a WPT right at the high. I got my triangle that confirms confluence. All right, there it is. What's my oscillator do? Both oscillators confirm. There's your short. Another big trade on the S&P. Then we come up again, and we come into the WPT. Once again, oscillator short, same thing. You get down to your level. This is where you don't have to take these. If you close two candles closes outside, of the ATR. If you take trades like this, when you get a reversal and the oscillator pulls you in like this, if you take a shot at it with this oscillator pulling you in at this bar, just make sure you put your stop right there. It should never break that high of that bar. Okay, if you take shots on those outside the ATR. Because I will take shots on outside the ATR with trend. Once again, there's a, there's one there also, and you're good to go. So when you're doing these guys, and here's into the close on the S&P and the close, it was ticking as you guys were signing in, you're watching this trade live. This is one into the live, into the, uh, into the close as we were doing this, and there's another one.